nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you.
So we're gonna raise a mighty and a loud sound. Come on, sing this with me. We'll sing a little louder. 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 Oh, sing a little God wants to inhabit the praises of his people. So this morning, I want to invite you to lay everything aside, to lean in, to draw near to Jesus as he draws near to us. Come on, let's sing this out together. I can't get enough. No, I can't keep. I can't walk away, cause I can't walk away, oh, I can't walk away, for I have seen your face, and Jesus, I can't walk away. Come on, church, let's sing this to him today. I just want to be where you are I just want to be near your heart Oh, there's nothing like you. There is nothing like your love There is nothing like your love oh. I can't get enough, and I can't get enough. No, I can't get enough. You're amazing, you're amazing, love. Jesus, I can't get enough.
There's no one like our God today. If you feel comfortable, let's raise our hands. Let's declare that he is holy, that there's no one like him. Come on, let's sing this out today. In
give big praise in this place. Jesus, have your way. Man, it's so awesome to be in this place, worshiping together, amen. Well, we're so glad you're here today. Thank you for coming. I hope you've come expecting for God to do some new things in your heart, in your life today. Thanks for worshiping with us at this time. Please be seated. Thanks so much for joining us here at Plum Creek this weekend. We know there are a lot of amazing churches all over Castle Rock and all across the internet. So we consider it a privilege that you have decided to spend part of your weekend here with us. And if you haven't done so already, we would love for you to get connected and plugged in here. And we've tried to make that super easy for you. If you're joining us here in person, there's a QR code in the seat back pocket in front of you. And for those of you joining us online, you can go to plumcreek.church slash next. That's gonna be the page where you can find all the information we're gonna give you today, plus more ways that you can get connected and contribute here. There's also a section for discussion questions that are gonna tie into today's message. All of that is at that same page. Also, we feel like it's super important for you to know that here at Plum Creek, we are all about changed lives, changing lives. And we are just so thankful for many of you that have chosen to partner with us financially and help us see true life change in this community and all across the world. Thank you so much for your generous hearts and your generous habits. If you would like to learn more about how you can partner with us financially, you can find all that information at that same QR code or page, plumcreek.church slash next. We also wanna let you know about an exciting opportunity to dive deeper in your faith and grow your relationship with God. Discipleship Training Course is a 10 week, two nights a week training course that's gonna help you dive deep and learn more about your faith. It all starts on Sunday, April 10th. And if you need more information, the Discipleship Training Course team is out in the atrium today and they would love to tell you more about it. Or if you're joining us online, you can find all that information at plumcreek.church slash next. Well, we are in the last week of our Crazy Little Things series where we've been learning about God's intentions for our relationship with Him and our relationship with those closest around us. Thanks so much again for being here. We can't wait to see what God is gonna do today. What's up, Plum Creek? Doing good? Thanks for being here today. Uh, grateful that you would choose to spend some time with us. And greetings to those of you that are joining us online. Thank you as well for being here. I think it would be very appropriate before we jump into what we're gonna do today that we would just spend a few minutes uh, praying. Can we do that? Can you bow your head for just a second? <clears throat> We live in a world where so often it can feel like things are very, very out of control. And uh, when we hear the news and watch the news of what's happening in Ukraine and the unrest that's a part of the world that we live in, <clears throat> um, we, we feel like there's not much we can do sometimes. But friends, there is. There is. And so I want this to not be the, the last moment that we pray over this, but in in the quietness of your own heart and in this moment, would you just take some time right now to pray for this situation that's taking place overseas right now? Father, today, sometimes we don't even know what to pray. We need your help. We, we pray for peace. We pray for protection. We pray for those that are in harm's way to be safe somehow. And Lord, we pray for wisdom for those that are making decisions that are impacting thousands of lives. We desperately need your help. We know you've called us to be people of unity and, and Lord, we, we need your help today because it's clear there is, a, there is not unity. And our hearts hurt when we know that people are being killed and, and we need you in the middle of this. We know you are. So Father, I just ask today that every time we hear the name of this country, Ukraine, that you would that you would remind us to pray this week. When we see those words online or they come across our social media feed, that we would pray. And that, Father, you would do a miracle and that you would stop this in the name of Jesus. We need your help. In your name we pray, amen. 
please don't let this be the last time that you pray over this circumstance and situation this week. And I have a very, very hard transition to make from that. <clears throat> so how many of you are familiar with what they call this reality TV show, The Bachelor? Some of you raise your hand, yeah. <clears throat> Could you just raise your hand if you're like addicted? If you just raise your hand. Some of you, thank you for being honest. I, I don't understand you, <laughs> right? Because <clears throat> guys, if I said anything different than that, you're checking my man card right now, right? <clears throat> Here's what's interesting about that. <clears throat> Clayton went to my nephew's high school. They played ball together. And so my daughter, Megan, played ping pong with Clayton. Yeah, I know, I know. When she was in junior high. So Clayton became Megan's password for everything because she thought he was cute back then, but which has caused a problem at the Miller house right now. And the problem is this, Megan, who I would have never dreamed would be watching what they call a reality TV show called The Bachelor is watching The Bachelor because she thinks that she knows Clayton. <clears throat> so the other day I sat down on the couch while she was watching this for like 10 minutes max. And I was like, we're, we're in trouble in our country today. This is not okay. And I get the entertaining value of that, but holy cow, guys, if this is how we're learning how to do relationships, no wonder our relationships are a complete disaster. Which reminds me of a passage of scripture that I want to read real quick that we've been highlighting over the last couple of weeks. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but here's what happens. But let, but let God. God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Can I get an amen? If you want to have, listen, if you want to have different kind of relationships than the world around us, this is going to come as a huge surprise. You're going to have to do something different than the world around us. So please listen to me. Don't learn relationships from The Bachelor, okay? Pick up your Bible. Because this book is to be transformative in your life. And I would challenge you as you read this to ask God to speak to you. And as he speaks to you, it will transform your life if you will put what you read into practice. My fear is that uh, oftentimes when we do a series like we just have called Crazy Little Thing and we talk about relationships and how the Bible talks about this and how those things apply to our lives, you may think, Doug, those are just good ideas. But today, what we're doing is we're going to wrap this series up in a little different way. And uh, I've asked some friends of mine to come so they can come now. If you guys would thank, thank them, they're going to help me. Uh, we're going to do a little panel today. And uh, we're going to talk about these principles that we've been talking about uh, over the last couple of weeks and how they've played out in relationships. Now, here's what I need you to know. Look at these people. Not perfect. Okay, can you just look at them right now and say, not perfect? Just say it. That was not convincing. How about if you guys tell them not perfect? <laughs> okay, that was even louder right there, right? Listen, we're all in this together. We're all trying to figure out relationships together. These are people that I have great respect for. There are many others that are part of our church that I could have invited as well to be part of this time that we have uh, together today. So I'm gonna hand over the facilitation of this to Pastor Gary, and he's gonna walk us through some things. Allow the Lord to speak to your heart today, okay? Let's do it. It is so good to have the panel up here on stage, and so I just wanna quickly introduce, this is Tim and Marianne Cruiser, Doug and Beth Miller, and Mike and Nisha Lowe, and my name's Gary, and uh, my wife's name is Amanda. And I want us, before we go any further, say how many years that we've been married, so. Cruisers. Uh, we've, we've been married 54 years. And this May, it'll be 30 years for us. And this July, it'll be 21 for us. And in May, it will be 16 for Amanda and myself. And col thank you. And collectively, that means we have almost 120 years of marital experience on stage, but as Doug just said, we are in process right with you. We have not figured it all out 
uh, but we're going to share some of the things that we have uh, figured out along, along the journey. So we're just going to kind of review the series. So in week one, we talked about finding your one. And what we really mean when we say finding your one is getting your relationship with God in first place. And one of the verses we looked at was Matthew 6, 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. And so, Mike and Nisha, would you start by just sharing why that is so important? Yeah, running to God. I mean, having that number one is so key to the foundation of um, our spiritual lives. And, and before we can get our relationships right this way, I feel it's so important we need to get our, relation, our relationship right um, with our Lord. So uh, once we kind of get that in check, we're able to really key in on the beauty that can be this. Um, and I would just say we got married young at 21, so we literally kind of grew up together. I mean, we started dating in high school, but this was something that I got wrong for a while um, because I was looking to him to fulfill every want, desire, need, all the things. And that's not... <laughs> That's not good. God says, I want you to come to me for that. And so there's, it's just a lesson, a lifelong lesson. But I, I hope I've gotten better at defaulting to the Lord first instead of always defaulting to him to fulfill. Because I really do believe that God withholds some of those things because he desires relationship with us. He wants us to come to him for those things and not always be defaulting to our spouse. Tim and Marianne, what happens from your viewpoint when this gets out of order? It it doesn't go well for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if we don't put God first in our relationship, then, as Mike and Nisha said, you're looking to each other to fulfill needs that you can't do. And uh, I, I know it doesn't go well for me. And if we assign the role of God to ourselves or to our partner, we make very crummy gods. We make very inferior gods. And we can do, we can either become very controlling or we can uh, become introverted to keep from dealing with what we have to deal with. So God is God and we're number two. Doug and Beth, how have you guys learned to prioritize this? Um, well, prioritizing God in, in my walk with him means I have to spend time with him, right? any relationship, if you're not spending time together, it's not really a relationship. So, and that looks different in different seasons of life. I would think when um, all of our kids were young, I barely had time for myself at all. So it was really hard to make God number one and spend a ton of time with him. But um, when our kids were little, I came across a devotional book called Jesus Calling. And that book was perfect. It was short. I could read through it for the, and then what it did is it, it helped me to bring God into my life all day long. Like even when I'm folding laundry, all of a sudden my mind would go to what I read that morning and I would talk to God. Or if I was driving in the car, I would think about him and talk with him. So that's kind of what it looked like in that season of life. Um, and then middle school, high school, when my kids got older, I had more time. And my prayer life grew amazingly because I needed God. I was desperate for him. Um, you know, as you have kids in school, all of a sudden I would see the world impacting them. I would see the enemy going after their souls. And I was desperate for God to help because I had felt like I lost control. I'm not in control of them anymore. And they were making decisions that were important. And so that's really where my habit came in um, into my life where every morning I got up early and I just cried out to God. I needed his wisdom on how to parent in that season. I needed his strength. Um, I needed God's protection over my kids because the enemy was after them. And so it really became a priority in that season of life. And that's really where my habit kind of grew from. And then this season of life that we're in, we're kind of empty nesters now. And I have a whole lot more time to spend with the Lord. And I long to be with him. I can spend hours with him. But all of that to say it's a relationship. And I love him more today than I did back then because our relationship has grown. So every season is different. And trying to figure out how to make him that priority in every season is important. 
I would say that's, that's it, prioritization, and it's easy for all of us. The responsibilities that we have in life, the things that are on our schedule, our to-do list, seem to get in the way of strategic time with the Lord, and it's easy to justify, right? It's easy to justify, man, I'm busy, I got this going, I need to provide for my family, I need to do these things for me. A lot of times it's getting ready for the weekend. What am I going to say? How am I going to say it? And it feels like easy to justify because I'm like in the word and I'm studying and I'm doing all this stuff to be ready to teach. And at the same time, if I'm not careful, I can have a depleted soul, even doing really good things, just as we all can. And so it's, it's really about making sure that there is some margin of time, strategic focus to take care of your soul. And we've been talking about that a lot over the last few weeks, and we're going to keep talking about it. Marianne, you said something off stage about a test that you use for yourself. Yeah, God has, God's my change agent. I'm not looking to anybody else. God is my change agent. And I found Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit, to be very good tape measure for how, where I am and how I'm doing and where I need to, need to grow. And if you look at it, you'll see before the uh, fruits of the Spirit some really horrible things. And that the fruit of the Spirit is the antidote to that. And so uh, concentrating on love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And where I find myself lacking, I know I need to run to God, and we need to work on that. He needs to work on me on that. So good. In week two, uh, we talked about finding your two. And Pastor Bob uh, <laughs> challenged us with this concept of, of being super strategic and intentional uh, as we are looking uh, to find our spouse or significant other. And one of the verses we looked at was the verse uh, Pastor Doug just read, uh, Romans 12, 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. So whether you're here in the room or whether you are joining us online, Panel, what should be our priorities uh, as we are looking for our two? And maybe, Beth, would you go first? Um, yeah, I would just encourage everyone, instead of focusing on looking for that number two, I would encourage you just to look at you, to work on you, um, to be the best version, the healthiest version of you that you can be. One of our values is uh, we're all people in process, right? So God will reveal things to us that he wants us to deal with. So we all have wounds. We all have um, pain in our heart from the past. We all have issues, whether it's you struggle with anger or depression or addiction. Whatever it is, um, work on you to be the best version of you. And if that means get counseling, get the help that you need to work through those issues, that's the best um, best place to go and to focus on. If it's spiritual, talk to a pastor, maybe get a mentor. Um, just focus on what God is revealing in your heart to be the best version of you because as you get healthy, your relationship will be healthy. That's great. I, I know that when Mary Ann and I are praying for our grandchildren who are reaching the point of, of uh, perhaps looking for a spouse, we pray that they will be a godly spouse rather than that they find a godly spouse. That's good. Anyone else? How you're being? I have an idea. Uh, why don't you, if you're in the process of looking for someone to, to be in relationship with, what if you spent <clears throat> as much time or even a third of the time in that pursuit as you did in pursuit of Jesus? In pursuit of the things that you're working on in your own life. Look at how much time you spend on an app or a dating website or something like that and make sure that you're at least, wouldn't it be cool if I could just download an app on your phone and before you could look at a dating app or a dating website, it would click all the things that you need to work on today to be the person God wants you to be that would actually help you to be attractive to the person that you're trying to find too. Boy, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Stay tuned, Plum Creek, coming out 2023. 2023, yep. <laughs> I need an app designer that can read your soul. That would be awesome. <laughs> Doug, you've talked about over the years in relationship series about creating a list. You want to talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting because I, I heard the story of this guy who 
um, a super successful guy. He, he, he got into his 30s and he wasn't married yet. And so he was trying to think about the person that he wanted to marry. He was very focused on his career. So he made this list of this ideal woman that he wanted to try and find. And so he, he, I mean, he got intentional, spent time and really worked hard on that. And he let it sit for a day or two and he picked the list back up again and he read it. And uh, all of a sudden it became abundantly clear to him that this woman would never be interested in him. (laughs) And so it's what Beth just said and what we're talking about that he became then intentional about working on some of the things that he knew he needed to work on to find this woman of his dreams. And I think sometimes we're just hoping that happens or you know, praying that happens without really doing the hard work of preparing yourself for that too. Because what happens when you do that well is it kind of helps you make those decisions, right? Some people are gonna be, uh, that, that potentially could be challenging or trouble or not good in relationship with you. You won't be interested in them because you're really focused in on the right things. Don't be more enamored with relationship or marriage than you are about being the man or woman that God wants you to be. Yeah, and I just want to quick add the we're people in process. That means even when you do find your two, um, God wants us to continue to work on ourselves. I've gone to counseling. It changed my life. God changed my life, but used counseling in many ways. And Doug and I have gone to counseling. Uh, I've gone in the last year just for issues that God brought up that I needed to deal with. So don't be afraid to get the help you need. That's good. And I just want to take a moment and, and speak uh, to the single adults, either joining us online or, or here, in, here in the room. You may not know this about me, but I was almost 39 uh, before I was married. Everyone else here on stage got married very young, right out of you know, uh, college or even uh, before. And, and I dated girls. I, I worked at a church, and there was always some lady wanting to introduce me to their niece or, or granddaughter or something like that. So I, I did that whole thing. And, and I just want you to hear my heart because I don't want to oversimplify or, or not uh, address like the emotional pain and, and the loneliness uh, that, that you can feel if, if you're in that season of life. And I get it. I, I have very clear memories of crying myself to sleep in, in my mid and late 20s, early 30s, just crying out to God, why? Why, God? Why, why haven't you brought someone into my life? And, and what I would just say, and just please hear my heart, we will all, in adulthood, we will all experience singlehood for some season of life. That might be right out of high school or, or college graduation. Uh, that might be because of divorce. Uh, that, that will happen if, if a spouse would die. So we will all experience singleness at some point in our lives. And the scriptures even tell us uh, that for some, uh, we are called to, to live the single life for, for all of our life. And what I would just say, the better question to ask, instead of asking the question that I was asking, you know, why am I single? A better question would be to ask, Uh, and especially for those of you who want to be married, is am I striving, just like Beth was talking about, am I striving to be the healthiest version of myself that I can be? And another better question for every single person is how am I using in this season of singlehood, how am I using this season for God? Because it, it is a gift. You will never have more time Uh, You will never have more freedom to serve the kingdom of God or to work on yourself. And so asking that question, how uh, am I using this current season of of singleness to honor the Lord? In week three, uh, we talked about marriage is we, not me. And we looked at this concept of living, it's a biblical concept, living unselfishly. And one of the verses was Ephesians 521 what says what which says and further you will submit to one another out of reverence for Christ and I thought what would be good is we say that together and a little bit slower so would you just read this with me one more time and further you will submit to who one One another another. out of reverence for who Christ. Christ yeah so Mike Talk about why this idea, we could call this mutual uh, submission, why this is so important. Yeah, I love what Marianne said with Galatians 5, fruit of the Spirit. So when we are living and chasing after God, 
uh, as our number one, I feel like these things kind of come naturally. It's a great indicator and check, especially in a marriage, someone you're with every day. Um, and so, yeah, for, for me, that is just point on, like as far as just, okay, why am I losing my temper, short-tempered, um, not treating her well? And it usually comes to those things first. Nisha, what happens when Mike uh, is living selfishly? It doesn't go well for him. <laughs> um, and vice versa. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't go well for me or for him when we're living selfishly. And again, it goes back to that first principle of just making sure that God is your number one and your spouse is your number two. And I would just say, I have learned the hard way. Me trying to fix him or using too many words <laughs> doesn't work well either. Prayer does, and that may sound trite to say that, just pray over them, but I have prayed over things for him years, and I've seen the fruition of that, and we're 20, almost 21 years. Slow learner. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a, when you're submitting those things to the Lord, I am banking on the Holy Spirit to do his work in him. I'm not his Holy Spirit. I make a really bad Holy Spirit, so don't try take those to the Lord like that. And again, that goes back to just making the Lord your number one, that relationship. And these other things flow. That doesn't mean it's easy all the time. It just means that you're defaulting to the Lord first. You're going to him first with these things. And that's, it's just a lesson. It's been a hard lesson, but it's, I'm still learning. <laughs> Tim and Marianne, how have you learned to put the other first? Well, let, before we go to that, I'd I like to just preach for a minute. Pardon me, Doug, but you know. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> well, I've been at this a long time, and, and uh, the first thing I want to say is marriage is a lot of work. It's really hard, but it's a lot of fun as well. We're in a very sweet time in our life, but today's society would tell you that you know, love is an emotion. And uh, I can tell you that very soon after you get married, some of that emotion begins to go away. I mean, there are times, and it may be as soon as, you know, two weeks after the wedding day, that you... you Hypothetically, you, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, you, that you don't like each other, right? I mean, things aren't going that well. And there will be times in every marriage where things don't go well. And that's where you have to make a choice. You have to make love a choice. And you, and, and you do that every day. I have some artwork on, on the wall in my house that says, what does love require of me? And I have to add the word today. What does it require of me today? And, and what do I have to do to make a choice to love my wife? And I can tell you that not only does that work, but if you do that for a while, the emotion comes back. You can lose it, but you can always regain it by practicing that choice. Mm -hmm. That's good. Hey, how about that, preacher man over here? That's good. Um, I think... One of the things that draws us together is that we are quick to ask for forgiveness and we're quick to give it. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a union of two good pardoners. And if, if you maintain that, it, your, your um, life is a lot smoother. It's a lot more peaceful. You're not carrying a weight you were never intended to carry. And um, I think, too, um, the other person sees more the characteristics of God in you. That's so good. All right, panel, I'm going to give you one last opportunity. What is one uh, piece of advice that you wish you would have received or, or maybe uh, you did receive it or a piece of wisdom that you would just want to share uh, with those in the room or, or those of us joining online? I'll go. Um, Tim, you were just telling me last night that Marianne makes you laugh every day. And I said, yes, he does that too. And 
just, goodness, couldn't we laugh more? <laughs> we need to laugh more. We need to not take each other so seriously. And we're talking about some really serious things. But on a lighter note, I would just say it's important to laugh together and to be together. And I don't know. Yeah. I, I wish someone would have told me about real commitment, being absolutely committed no matter what to making it work. Now, we do that. And I can tell you that through those choices that, that we've made, I'm crazier about this woman than I've ever been in my life. Preach it. I get carried away sometimes. It's <laughs> good. Um, when we, being married 53 years, in the early part of our marriage, we didn't have access to good material that we could go to to teach us how to incorporate our two lives into one. And we didn't have really good Christian marital counseling available to us in a lot of the areas where we were living. And so we looked to older couples who could mentor us. And so that was really, we relied on their wisdom and their caring and their prayers for us to counsel us and coach us through hard times. That's awesome. I too would just say, um, memorize Matthew 6.33, the verse that Gary first said, because it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will give you everything you need. And sometimes we make it so complicated, and it really isn't. God made it simple. Keep him first in your life, and he'll give you what you need when you go through the hard times. When, you know, you're struggling with things, he will always be there, and he will give you what you need through the good and the bad. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, uh, I love this series because the whole key to this relationship and even friendships and uh, family outside of that is where, how much effort are we putting into that work with, uh, with the number one relationship? Um, and like you guys, the panel has said, I mean, this church is an amazing place for resources to help you with that. And uh, yeah, it is, that's been the key in our marriage is not focusing on each other, but focusing on our individual relationship with the Lord. And then good things have seemed to happen from time to time. Yeah, and, and there has to be a cord of three strands, as it says in, in Ecclesiastes. I would just say this as we're wrapping up. Like, you, you need to have your focus on yourself. It's easy when there's tension and there's easy when it's, things get more challenging and difficult to get my attention on Beth and all the things that I wish Beth would do, right? And I can't make those decisions for Beth, but Beth can I can lead myself, though, and I can make sure that I'm doing what I need to do and bringing my best to the to the relationship. And I think oftentimes it's kind of one of the little little tricks of the enemy that he causes us to get our attention on. And it's not even just in marriage relationships, any relationship where our focus gets on the other person, the other the other individual or our spouse instead of ourselves. So. I would challenge you to fight against that and to really kind of focus in on some of the things that we've talked about. Own what you need to own. Get help for what you need to get help with. Get passionate about your walk with Jesus. You pray like crazy. And uh, I believe I believe what will happen out of that is relationships are going to gain traction in a different kind of way. And you're going to know that you're doing your best and bringing your best to the relationship. So keep your t uh, focus on yourself. So. so good. Thank you so much, panel. Would you join me in thanking the panel as well? So we're going to wrap up this series, and uh, I want a couple things to uh, challenge you with. Uh, young people that are here, students, young adults, those that aren't married yet, I want you to really focus in on what we've talked about today. And I started with kind of in jest mentioning some of the things that culturally are kind of sending us these messages. But listen, I'm very, very serious about this. God created our relationships to be awesome. That doesn't mean they're not hard work, but they're awesome. Like Tim said, I love Beth more today than I ever have in my life. Our relationship looks so different than it did when we first got married. And that's not because we just let things happen. It's because we've stayed intentional in investing and committing to and working hard at our marriage. And you guys know our story. We've been through some stuff together. 
and in the middle of the crisis is not the best time to be working on your marriage, but to have a strong marriage going into difficult times, man, that's strength and stability, partnership that can pull through those tough times in life. So young people, listen to me for a second. Singles, listen to me for a second. Uh, Make your list. Check it twice. Be the list and trust your God. Don't make the priority being in relationship. Make the priority being ready for relationship, however that looks. And if you're married, here's my challenge for you today. Ready? Even if you've never done this before, I double dog dare ya. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Pray together. Every day, try for a week. I want you to find a, maybe it's right before you go to bed or first thing in the morning when you wake up, I want you to pray together every single day this week. Just try it. Watch what happens. Some of you are like, I don't know what we would pray about. Talk about it. What are the things that are weighing heavy on your heart? Maybe it's some things with the kids or it's your finances or work stuff or whatever, our marriage. And then listen, before you're done praying, pray for each other out loud. Try doing that every day this week. Let me know what happens. It'll be good. Can you bow your heads for just a moment? Father, we are so aware that our enemy is at work trying to distort and destroy relationships. And uh, within the sound of my voice in this room and virtually in rooms all over the world, Father, I know there are people that, that are in all different stages and places relationally. We have young people that are trying to figure these things out. And uh, we have singles that are trying to figure out what your plan is and maybe sensing frustration that dreams haven't come to fruition yet. We have folks that have walked through very, very painful divorces and and marriages that are struggling today and are are just crying out for help and hope. And uh, Lord, we have people that have been married for a long time and we have people that that are engaged in this moment and heading towards marriage. And, and Lord, we have folks in the middle of seasons that have been tough for all kinds of different reasons. And we have people that would admit that their relationships seem in this season to be flourishing. And we know that diversity brings all kinds of different nuances and challenges. And so today, first of all, in the name of Jesus, I am gonna pray for protection over relationships protection over individuals that that aren't in relationship right now that are that are interested in heading that direction and hopeful lord i know there are people here as gary said that are called to to a lifetime or a season of singleness and and lord i'm praying for your protection and your blessing in all of that you're a big God, and, and I'm praying today in particular for those that have lost hope. I'm praying for people that haven't uh, taken seriously the responsibility of continually, passionately pursuing individual health. And the result has been relationship challenges. And so, Father, I pray today that you will help us to be serious about this because we know the enemy is serious about blowing up relationships. And that's not okay with you. Your plan is that we would flourish and that we would grow together in our relationships. And so today I pray over our marriages and against the enemy and his attacks. Lord, I pray you would help us to champion health and you would help us to pursue you with all of our hearts and that as a result, as we bring our best, Lord, whatever those relationships look like, that that you would honor us and that you would honor our relationships too. We love you, Father. It's in Jesus' name that we pray together. Amen. Amen. Um, we're gonna, these folks are gonna be uh, sticking around a little bit. They'll be up front here. Listen, if you have a prayer need in your life, it doesn't, not, not even necessarily about relationships. It could be that. It could be something else and you would like just partnership and prayer today. We'd be honored to pray with you. Prayer team would be up front. Um, and I just want you to know that I love you and I'm committed to praying for you and I'm committed to praying for your relationships. But here's what I need from you. We do the same for me. It's a big deal. And uh, when we're in this together, I promise, I promise that we will be stronger, okay? That's what God wants. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. And uh, we will see you next weekend.